world and welcome to the Glenn Alex Show. On the Glenn Alex Show, it's all about health because health matters. On the Glenn Alex Show, we talk about total health, which involves the whole person, the mental, the physical, the emotional, and the spiritual, because you are whole and all of you matter. I'm Glenn Alex, author of Living in Total Health, speaker and health coach. And my life's work is about health because I believe that healthy people are more genuine, more loving, more giving, and less likely to harm self or others. Just think about it. If everyone were as healthy as they could be, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, then there'd be more acceptance in the world. There'd be more global cooperation, and there would be less violence and abuse. So I hope you join me on the journey for health and help me welcome my guest, Gabriella Von Ray. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. How are you? I'm great. It's nice and warm in Las Vegas, <laughs> so I'm good. It, I, it is cooling down not fast enough for me, though. Okay. However, I do like warm weather. Okay. And so I have to say that um, just got super lucky, super lucky. Met Gabriella, and she had me at hello. And... <laughs> <laughs> And she was she's in town, and it just so happens that we worked out this date to to get the show done, and I'm so excited to have her here because she's amazing. So, Gabriella, welcome. Thank you. Will you take a, a, some time and tell us who you are? Okay, let's try to do this short, otherwise we don't get <laughs> anywhere. Oh, the highlight. Okay, the highlight. <laughs> Basically, I am the founder of the Dare to Be Kind movement. Okay. And the reason that I'm so passionate about what I do is it always stems from something from our childhood, right? Right. I mean, for most people, our passion comes really from our pain. Mm -hmm. So I always say that I took my pain, turned it into my greatest strength, which in turn makes me the cause's best ally. Okay. But that's for you, that's for me, that's for literally anyone who would want to do that with right. their pain. But having said that, I'm one of the first cross-cultural adoptions. I was born in Pakistan. I was brought immediately to a Catholic orphanage. Okay. That's where I got the name Gabriela, which I kept. That's a beautiful see. name. <laughs> and then I got adopted uh, by Dutch people. That's hence the strange <laughs> last name that nobody can pronounce. <laughs> and, uh, but it's okay because I learned to say in English. It's a ray of sunshine. And I love it. And, then uh, I went, oh and you God. are a ray of sunshine. I, I love life. Yes. I really love life. It, it hasn't always been kind to me. But I, I feel that we're kind of, all of us, are, we are multi-layered. Mm -hmm. And with the wellness and the amazing work that you do, well, thank you. I really believe that, I, I, I think you, you, you struck an enormous chord with me just about saying that you're for wellness and health because, and you said immediately when we met, it means so much more. Mm -hmm. And I understand totally where you're coming from because I have the same with the word kind, right? When we hear it, we're kind of a little hesitant. Yeah. Health, some people might say, oh, are you gonna put me on a diet? <laughs> right. Are you gonna think I'm not good enough? Right. You know, so we have these preconceived notions in our head and in our heart, I'm pointing at my heart, but it's a little bit everywhere, right? Right. And these preconceived notions, I love that you're trying to bring awareness that there are so many layers, and that's what I mean. We are multi-layered, multi-faceted. Yes, we're dynamic creatures. We are creatures. such amazing creatures. We can rebound from so much pain. This is what I really, I, I see it in my own character. I have such perseverance, even when my parents sometimes said, stop. <laughs> and I went, no, no. I'll keep going like right. an Energizer bunny. Right. Because, and all the non-Americans have no idea what that means, but that's okay, it's a battery. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking about that all of a Maybe sudden. we'll have a rabbit run across the screen. And you have the same thing. There is everything that health entails has so many spokes so many mm -hmm. beautiful spokes and i feel kindness is the same and i think that is where we connected like instantly instantly because... well you had me at hello and i meant that <laughs> <laughs> i really meant that that's the smile oh, you have the same <laughs> so that's basically what i do i i i am the founder i am a speaker an author to of three books four pretty soon but I somehow got the title along the way as okay. a kindness expert. expert. And 
um, sometimes it gets me in hot water because people think that if you have that title, that means you can't say no. Oh. And that is not true. I want to oh. be very clear. Yes. Being kind to self also means that I have learned in my life to say, no, I can't. Because if I say yes to you right now, I'm so tired. My health will be really a problem yes. because I will come on my last little leg. So that is something I'm sure that you can attest to. Absolutely. Totally. And let me add that um, kindness is not equal to weakness. Yes. A lot of people mistake kindness okay. for weakness and try to manipulate and deceive and abuse other people who are kind. So I think uh, just my impression of Gabriella in, in our conversations is ki kindness is um, incredible strength. Absolutely. It is the strength to do, to not do, to say yes, and to say no. This is why I called it dare to be kind. Yes. I found the word became so much more powerful with the word dare. When you dare. Yes. Yeah. I like that. Because if we did it, then we wouldn't have all these movements either. Right. right. This is born just like you talking about health. It's born out of the necessity of not knowing. And we make the wrong uh, decisions, mm -hmm. if I may say so, instead of being informed. Yes. So we are informing people what parts of health would look like. And me, I do it in one little part because kindness has so much to do with how we feel. Absolutely. And kindness can uh, just span across all levels of health and all cultures and it transcends all everything. It transcends everything. Everything. Absolutely. Gender, Absolutely. religion, culture, everything. Everything. We yes. understand that. And there's one thing that's very, very interesting, by the way. When I ask people what kindness means to them, every single person gives me a different definition. Okay. However, and this is the part that's fun, when I say, okay, but do you remember it? And then they light up. I mean, they just light up instantly. Okay. And their face, everything in their physiology. I can't say that word. Help me out. Physiology. Ph physiology. All those languages. Physiology changes. Okay. It really changes. You see them change. And then they smile and they say, I remember. I remember. It brought such a feeling. And often people just go like this because... That feeling was so overpowering, so it gave them such courage. Okay. So. Okay. Well, thank you for that. So with that, we're going to just stop here for a second and okay. take a really quick break. So take this opportunity to visit livingintotalhealth.com and order your signed copy of the first edition of the book while supplies last. And we will be right back. I always add eating good, exercising, right. taking care of yourself. Right. And so those are all things that you mention in your book, Living in Total Health. <laughs> and so therefore, <laughs> these things are all so very important. If you haven't read Glenn's book, you need to. It's great. Welcome back to the Glenn Alex Show. I'm here with guest Gabriella Von Ray. And then the first segment, uh, we met Gabriella and the fantastic work she's doing. Uh, Gabriella is an author, a speaker, and a kindness expert. And so where we left off the first segment, I want to go back to a little bit. So tell us exactly what a kindness expert is and does. I'm not totally sure. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be really honest about it. Okay. Because I don't think we ever give ourselves uh, the title of expert because A, I don't take myself that seriously, and B, I learn every day. Okay. So that's already, just having said that, we, we all learn, right? Hopefully. And maybe when I was 20, I thought I was an expert, but <laughs> I don't think that anymore at all. So, but having said that, I'm going to say another word, okay. a word that I really love, instigator. We are all instigators of something. You're an instigator of health. Okay. I'm an instigator of daring. Okay. And daring to be something. And, and, and we can fill that in in different parts when I talk. Okay. And so, um, for example, I got this idea when I was doing a lot of television on bullying. And, you know, I just don't like the word. Okay. And so I came up, we are instigators, and that 
takes the label away of all of us. We're instigators of things. Sometimes we're instigators of something uh, kind of mean. Sometimes we are humorous, like the person filming this all, right. or, you know, whatever. Okay. So we have these phases. We cannot be, for example, I always take this example, happiness. You can't be happy 24-7. Happiness no. is a moment. Oh, happiness and then, is totally temporary. Yeah. And so dare to be kind is a moment that you see something and you go out there and you are totally kind. For example, um, I always say dare to be kind. The slogan is take that one moment to see it. Then when you take that one moment, you take the person and you just be kind to them. So one moment, one person, one kindness, be the difference. And by doing that, you shift that person that is in a negative space to a positive place in seconds. That's the base of the movement. Okay. And the acts can be very simple. Oh, absolutely. They don't have to cost any money. Never. Okay. For me, never. Okay. And maybe this is what you really like is that, see, I felt that with other things, we often want something in return. Yes. I Strings. say purposeful <laughs> acts of kindness that have nothing to do with being nice. Nice is etiquette and being civil. For example, if you dropped your pen, which you don't have, but let's say you dropped your pen, mm -hmm. I would pick it up. That is civility. Okay. I'm not going to throw that on social media and make a viral video oh, out of that. Gabriella picked up my pen today. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's something that is requested from our upbringing. Our parents actually taught us that, even though we don't notice it a lot in today's society. But that's due to something else that we can talk about later because it has a lot to do with health. It's the word busy. Okay. See, we think we're busy. So okay. that's that. But that purposeful act to give, for example, a homeless person to go into a store, get water, and give it to him. Ask him for his name. The Dare to be Kind uh, movement dehumanizes people. No, the opposite. It we, the, 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 yeah, we rehumanize yes. them. We bring them back. When you say to a homeless person, what's your name? I'm going to sit here and let's eat, let, let me share my sandwich with you. They look at you as if you've come from Jupiter <laughs> or Mars. And then I always say, you know, I've been there. Yeah. And then they ask you why. And I said, we're all one paycheck away from being homeless. And one Unfortunately, most family of us member away from being an orphan. Yes. Well, let me um, just ask another question because yeah. I want to get to yes. a couple of adoption things while we yeah. still have time in the segment. Is... The Dare to Be Kind movement, is it context specific? Is it, what I mean by that is, is, is the expectation that it would be at work, that it would be at home, that it anywhere. would be anywhere? Anywhere. The, the, I ask people to, if you want to go to Africa or you want to go to India or you want to go to faraway countries and donate, I think that's wonderful. I have no problem with that. But I ask passionately <laughs> to look within your two-mile radius. Okay. Because in this two-mile radius, we can do so much yes. that doesn't cost any money. We can do so much to help one person. One person. I'm not asking you to do s something crazy. I'm just asking you to help one person. One person in your office. The barista in the Starbucks. The people that are ignored, that feel unnoticed unwanted and unloved those people bring them back yes pull them in so small conscious act of kindness absolutely. without strings absolutely without strings without strings absolutely. okay i love that yes i love that Thank you. <laughs> so quickly tell me what a kindness ambassador is kindness instigator okay we have kindness instigator love to have you a kindness instigator <laughs> all we ask is that they spread it around. Obviously, the movement needs to grow. But we ask them once a month to tell us about something that they saw. Okay. It doesn't always have to be them. Okay. So we take the pressure off. But things that you see, 
that you say, oh my gosh, this was so wonderful. I saw this, okay. this, and this. Okay. Because your story brings the world together. Okay. And if you're really bold, <laughs> and not everyone is, if you're really bold, tell us your story. Whether you do it in video, audio, or written, we will help you with it. Just give it to us because your story of pain helps someone else at the end of the other side of the world through internet, of course, okay. to feel more capable and less alone. What a gift what that a gift. you can do that. Yes. It's amazing. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. So that's two tasks if they're bold enough. <laughs> but if we want to start with something little, we're more than happy to have anyone. Something small within your two mile radius. radius that you see because great things do start at home don't they absolutely they, they start, start at home, at home and, and you might have heard of something and just because you say it let, let's say that you say i saw a teacher do this then can you imagine all the teachers all think the teachers, oh my yes. god we're gonna do this yes. too yes yes that's a great idea. it's a ripple effect it, it is. really your voice matters we think it doesn't <laughs> But I promise you, on that big worldwide web, yes. we feel very alone. Yes. But someone sees Someone's, it. Somebody's paying attention. Someone sees it. Yes. 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 Okay. I love that. I love that. And that's all okay. that matters. Take it in, people. Take it in. One person <laughs> sees it. <laughs> okay. Well, we are going to stop again for another quick break. I promise it'll be quick. So please visit livingintotalhealth.com and book your complimentary health coaching session with me today. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Glenn Alex Show. This is segment three here with, I guess, Gabriella Von Ray. And in segment two, we talked a little bit more about the Dare to Be Kind movement, where you can have a huge impact on someone's life with a simple act of true kindness within the two mile radius of where you live or where you work. Is that right? Absolutely. Okay. So in this segment, I wanted to talk a little bit um, uh, about adoption. Okay. You're, you're one of the first cross-cultural adoptions. What is um, the number one thing you want adoptive parents to know? <sighs> this is not gonna sound friendly, but I really mean it with the <laughs> utmost respect. <laughs> Adoption does come with a price. So I personally think that we need to put the child first. We can't just adopt coming from the standpoint, I want a child. And I don't mean anything mean by that. I really don't. Because let's be honest, there are a lot of children within your countries, whether it's America, whether it's Europe, that need uh, parents, but that might be three or five or six. And we often don't want to adopt those children. So that's just, I'm just putting it out there okay. that that's something to consider too. You, make, you may think that it's more difficult than a baby, but I would say it's actually equal. It doesn't matter what you do. The adoptee will miss the real roots for the rest of their lives. And if they come from another country it's or another ethnicity than you are, then that aspect is kind of amplified okay. and we need to understand that because that's that's just the case like in my case nobody could have lied because my <laughs> mother is uh, very tall or was very tall blonde and blue-eyed and my father was even taller and my brother and sister <laughs> that I now have I mean how can a 411 Pakistani be adopted in a Dutch family where they're the tallest people in the world. They've surpassed the Danish years ago. So how is this possible? I must have wondered this. So anyway, it does, it does attest to my stiff neck that I started around the age of four because I always look like this at everyone in Europe. So that, that's tall a problem. Tall people. Very tall people. But I wanted to say something about that adoption that a lot of people don't know or don't have never heard of. And this is the universal message of belonging. And if you don't believe me, then please look or look up. Matthew Lieberman is a psychologist who says that we need to be healthy and well. Mm -hmm. We need a healthy 
social interaction yes. with others. Yes. So when we're excluded, which is another part of our movement, when we are excluded, I always say this with, people think I say this jokingly, but I really don't. It's like you feel like you're standing at a window looking in. So yes, I was adopted. Mm. But I was always on the outside of okay. the glass. I was never on the inside okay. of the glass. And the example that I'm going to give you and really short is uh, this woman. Don't forget, guys, this is 1966. So a little bit later, 1968. My parents ha are, are in diplomatic. Um, so they they have this kind of fancy party. This woman came comes in. I give a curtsy. That was my task: opening the door, curtsy, hi, welcome. Nah. <laughs> and <laughs> and she comes in and she refuses my handshake, and she asked me to go wash it. And then I, as a child, inside that little inner voice goes, "Is she stupid?" <laughs> because that inner voice really does that. I mean, I'm so sorry. Ask anyone. And it's not because I'm a child. I actually still have that inner voice that does that. When Sometimes people ask my me. my outer voice. <laughs> <laughs> Mine hasn't gone there yet. It's okay. because I'm kind. <laughs> but I try. <laughs> um, honestly, it is a problem. So I heard that and my father shooed me out of the room. So I actually went to bed without dinner with an entire party going on. Mm -hmm. And I didn't feel protected. So for the parents out there, please don't introduce your child that has a different skin color or ethnicity as you, by saying, this is my adopted child, they can all see it, okay? Now I know the times were different, but I still hear it sometimes. This is my adopted child, don't do that. Right. The child, I hated it. It's your child. I hated it yeah. either you adopted me and i'm yours i don't say you are my adopted mother i don't right you would you would dislike it so that's something i'm telling you the second thing i'm telling you is it go talk to the teachers before your child ever enters that classroom because when i had to say you know how a teacher starts the year mm -hmm. by asking do you have any questions as you can maybe imagine just an itty bitty bit <laughs> i was an outspoken <laughs> So my hand went up and I went, me, I got a question. May I sit in the back? Because in the back, it looks like a lot more fun than the first row for the <laughs> short people. So that's one thing. And the second thing I did was say, and to tell you the truth, I don't want to sit next to this girl. And then she said, what's wrong with that girl? And I said, well, she's my cousin. And she's going to tattletale to her mom. Her mom is going to tell my mom, and it'd be a mess. <laughs> Because I want to have fun. <laughs> and the teacher looked at me and said, Who is this Your child? Where did you come from? She's going to be a pain the whole year. And so she sent me out of the classroom. And the girl threw me under the bus, my cousin. Because all she had to do was chime in. She didn't. So think of this, people. Think that these are things that if my parents had known, they could have smooth this all out with right. the teacher. Right. So I spend most of my time in the classroom, but even as a tiny, tiny little toddler of three and a half, in kindergarten, they say, who's your mother? And I point at this tall lady, and they say, would you just not lie to me? Uh -huh. And you look at that lady and you go, I'm out of here, that is my mother. I, I don't know who you are. Well, hopefully with all of the research in psychology and family issues that the more current adoptive parents have kind of yes. figured that out and, and don't label the child yeah. and, and will protect the child from um, uh, mean people. But at least talk to the teacher. Yeah. If your child has a new teacher every year, talk to them. Go and see them before your child ever sets foot. That way you, you actually got their back. Yes. And, and, and as a parent, come on, yes. even, even if it was your biological child and she or he would have a speech impediment, you would do it. But you don't think just because of the adoptee, but think the child has no idea how to explain this because it doesn't want to pretend it's not yours. So it will ignore the adoption because it wants to be part of your family. Right. So the only one that can say that to a teacher is you, nobody else. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing yeah. that. That that 
Sounds Plus, very unpleasant. The health part is yes. is huge on this. The wellness part of this child. The connection, the social interaction, um, you know, it it is it all fits together. Absolutely. The connection and belonging and uh, just having that healthy, supportive, nurturing relationship. That all feeds into physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health. Absolutely. So, yes, it totally, it's all connected, folks. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Thank so you. So you can pick your facet and work on that, like kindness or wellness. Uh, just know that it's on, they're all interdependent, and it's okay to focus on one or the other. Uh, don't ignore the other parts, though, when you have the opportunity to integrate them into your lifestyle and your wholeness. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. So, Thank you so much for that. Wow, this time is gone. Ah! We just sat down. Thank you so much for being There's here. There's not one more segment? No, this oh is it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this is I it. want three more. <laughs> okay. Well, next time you're in town. Okay. Next time you're in town. Okay. okay. Absolutely. We, we will can, definitely can reconnect. Can we just say one more thing? Yes. That has to do with health? Sure. Because I think this is really important. In case you listen to the segments and you say, well, I still don't believe that kindness has anything to do with mm. being a healthy, balanced individual, then there's only one thing I can say to you. If you don't believe me, then go look it up on Google. The brain changes for altruism, nice kindness acts, all three acts, and it's all being tested. The entire brain lights up. And I always jokingly say, when I have committed a nice, kind act, and you know how you turn away and something makes you turn around? Uh -huh. I see the person that I helped. The shoulders are straighter. Yes. The head is up. There's just a bounce in their step. And then I always say, I feel the same bounce, actually. Yes. I feel the same... That, that there's just something, and I feel that I've grown one inch. And someone that's four eleven needs that. Okay, <laughs> without so, that's the stilettos. <laughs> yes. yes, yes, it is very connected. It is very yeah. connected because when you are kind and you are genuinely giving to someone else, it comes back yep. immediately. But my message is whether it comes back or not is not important. Well, no, I don't mean the expectation oh, that you'll okay. get something in return, but just like you but mentioned. But the feeling. Yes, yeah, your, it's two your people, emotional response oh, yeah. to being kind yeah. to someone else the brain is fires. very beneficial. Yeah. It's incredibly beneficial. So can you imagine if you did five a day? Oh, my God, your day would be terrific yes. even if you had a crummy job. Yes. Yes. This is no brainer to me. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It's just no brainer. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, how would anyone contact you? It's really easy. Don't try my last name, please. <laughs> just do hashtag dare to be kind, all in one word, small letters. And if that doesn't get you anywhere on social media, which I think it will, but let's say it doesn't get you anywhere, then go to our website, gabriella.global. You will find a page that is totally dedicated to the movement, and then you will find the website of the movement. And you can become a kindness instigator. You can help us by telling me to come and speak at your school, yes. speak at your university. Yes. We do corporations. We ask for money, of course. But schools, we try to accommodate them within their means. We refuse no one. Okay. Amazing. Please keep up the great work and we'll we talk about the kindness ambassador okay. later. Love it. Okay, fantastic. And thank you again for joining us for this episode of the Glen Alex Show. I would like to leave you with this closing thought. The Dalai Lama said, This is my simple religion. There is no need for temples, no need for complicated philosophy. Our our own brain, our own temple. Our own heart is our temple. The philosophy is kindness. It's yeah. kindness. Kindness can maybe not be a religion, but a, actually, actually a, a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You can definitely incorporate that into your lifestyle. And for me, kindness is not being nice. It's been my experience that um, people who present at nice, who, who present as nice, um, are manipulative, deceptive, passive aggressive. And those are the ones who attach strings to whatever they do. Um, most predators are nice. Con artists are nice. Um, backstabbers are nice. If they weren't, we'd run right away from them, wouldn't we? 
So for me, kind people are authentic. Um, they give without the expectation or demand of reciprocity, as we discussed. Mm -hmm. um, kind people hold a space for you to experience genuine love at the soul level, which once it manifests in this realm, amazing things can happen for exactly. self and for others. So let's set the stage for this greatness of the individual and of society and be kind. And until next time, be well.